evening and welcome to the Spirit Life broadcast. I'm Pastor Ken and we're so delighted to have you joining with us this evening for our Wednesday night Bible study. Come on, let's say Romans 8 and 2 together. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Spirit life, eternal life, Zoe life, the God kind of life. Jesus said in John 10 and 10, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. So Jesus came to give us the spirit life of himself. Amen. And the more uh, of his word that we internalize, amen, the more we will see the manifestation of the life of God uh, in our lives. We understand that uh, the word of God is spirit and it is life. John 6, 63, amen. So uh, our daily uh, vocation, our daily work is to get the word on the inside of us, amen. Put that word on the inside, put that word on the inside, amen. And we'll be like that tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, amen. You won't be all withered up and crippled, amen. But everything you touch will bring forth manifestations of the kingdom of God. So we're excited about the spirit life of almighty God, amen. It makes us strong, amen. It heals us. Amen. It brings a prophetic increase in our lives. Amen. It does so much for us in the, the, the physical realm as well as the spiritual realm. Things that are happening in your life right now, you might not even know all the ramifications of why it's happening, but you have spirit life on the inside of you. And that spirit life is helping you. Amen. It's working in you both to will and to do of the Father's good pleasure. So let's uh, take our communion. You know, we always partake of the meal that heals. Amen. We are big on communion. Praise God. Because as often as we do this, we proclaim, we announce. Amen. We show forth the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. We remember, we stir up our memory by uh, taking this communion. The bread represents our healing. The blood, the, the cup representing our eternal forgiveness. Amen. Our sonship, our right to the kingdom of God. The blood represents that we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. There's nothing that the blood, amen, cannot work through or break down. Whatever you need, amen, you can receive it because of the power of the blood of Jesus. Remember, uh, the old church used to sing, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. And they said, I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died upon that cross, and I know it was the blood for me. Amen. So we partake of the meal that heals. Amen. And we remember the death, the burial, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I think it's an interesting thing to know about uh, the realm of the spirit and the realm of the natural. In the natural, you have uh, life. Uh, you begin with life and you end in death. But in the spirit realm, amen, death turns into life. Amen, you know, absent from your body, you are now present with the Lord. Amen. You are in God's domain. Amen. 
nothing dark, amen, nothing crooked, you know, nothing that's suspect, amen. Everything is good and perfect and acceptable in the kingdom of God. So let's partake tonight, amen. And if you have any type of infirmity, I want you to thank God that he's consuming that infirmity in his great grace, in his great mercy, amen. By the stripes of Jesus, you are healed tonight. By the stripes of Jesus, you've been made whole tonight. By the stripes of Jesus, amen, you are well. So let's partake tonight to the glory of God. Amen. Well, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. Uh, we've been looking at the subject matter of biblical prosperity, biblical prosperity, and how uh, God desires uh, his people uh, to be blessed so that they uh, could be a blessing. Amen. And we took a scripture out of Genesis, Genesis chapter 12, Genesis chapter 12, uh, beginning with verse 1. And uh, the Lord tells Abraham, he tells Abraham, he says, uh, get out of your country and from your family, your father's house. He says, unto a land that I'm going to show you. And then he says, I'm going to make you a great nation. Amen. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. And you're going to be a blessing. Amen. Then he says, I'm going to bless them that bless you. I'm going to curse them that curse you. Because in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Amen. And that's, that's our call as God's people. We are blessed to be a blessing. And we are the salt of the earth. We are the, the light of the world. And uh, God wants the blessing that's on us in and through the person of Jesus Christ. He wants that blessing to be rich. Amen. He wants that blessing that makes rich and adds no sorrow. Proverbs 10 and 22. He wants that blessing to be on our lives. And as I said it before, I'll say it again. I know many people are, are turned off uh, to prosperity because of the uh, manipulation, you know, uh, telling people to sow and, and uh, you know, people who have uh, very uh, pernicious motives uh, concerning uh, finances and money, uh, but uh, that doesn't take away God's will for you to prosper and be in health. Amen. Uh, do not let uh, those who are uh, have, they have no knowledge concerning the kingdom of God, and they're just trying to. Uh, sneak in and, and, and try to uh, uh, get people to, to give them money. Uh, don't let the uh, false uh, prophets of the day, uh, those who uh, make a living in trickery, uh, you know, people make a lot of, uh, there's people all over tricking people and, and just about every venue of life. Uh, we had a, a situation here at the office uh, one day. Uh, we got a call and they were saying they represented uh, Delmarva and uh, we didn't pay the bill. 
you know, within a couple hours, all the lights would be off. And of course, you know, we have daycare and everything. And, and uh, I said, well, I, I, I told you, the bill, all my bills are paid. And they're like, well, sure. And then, and then fortunately, uh, you know, it just came to us that it's a scam. You know, it's a scam. But many people are scammed all the time. So you just have to um, know that you know that you know you serve the God who made everything. Amen? And uh, I had this quote that I've, 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 I've quoted for a long time, and I'm going to quote it tonight. Uh, You've been engineered by God to increase. Um, uh, and it says that God has engineered us to increase by way of his word. And uh, birds fly, fish swim without a lesson. And God said that uh, we were to uh, multiply, amen, and uh, subdue, replenish, take dominion, he told Adam, he said, I want you to be fruitful, and I want you to multiply. I want you to replenish. I want you to subdue, and I want you to take your dominion. So there's something in you, amen, given by the Spirit of God that will cause you to prosper, amen? And we said that uh, according to Deuteronomy 8 and 28, that uh, God said he would give his people power. Uh, he would give them power to increase and get wealth so that his covenant could be established. Amen. So that people could see that they belong to almighty God. He said he would give them the power uh, to prosper. He would... Uh, covenant with them and give them a divine ability to prosper. I want to read that. Uh, Deuteronomy 8, 18. But you shall remember the Lord your God, for it's he that gives thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. So uh, God tells his people I want you to remember me because I'm, I'm empowering you uh, to profit. I'm empowering you to increase. I'm empowering you, amen, to get wealth, amen, so that the, the covenant can be established, so that people can see I am God in the earth, amen? And so we said that one of the uh, definitions uh, for blessed meant to be divinely empowered to prosper or divine ability. God going beyond your trained ability, your academic accomplishments, and putting you into a place of increase for his glory and for his honor. And so uh, let's get back to uh, John, John 10 and 10, Jesus said that the thief comes to steal and to kill and destroy. And I, I want to say this because, you know, we have so many uh, different uh, interpretations of the scriptures and uh, so many different outlooks concerning scripture. Uh, but personally, I have seen a lot of people come to Christ preaching prosperity. He said, well, because it's more than money. Amen? Because it's more than uh, uh, a house and a car and, and some clothes and, and status. Amen? We said prosperity starts on the inside. Amen? For the believer, prosperity starts with the word of God. Prosperity starts with an understanding that I am a spirit. That's the real me. I have a soul and I live in a body. And when my spirit leaves my body, I no longer exist. And it can be forced out 
through sickness and disease or, or something catastrophic happening to me, your spirit can be forced out of your body when your body no longer exists or your, your body is no longer uh, in commission. But when your spirit leaves your body, uh, there's nothing but the corpse. And so uh, the, the book of James says, just like the spirit without the body, if the spirit's not in the body, it's dead. So faith without works is dead. And so when you understand that you're a spirit, and when you're talking about uh, prosperity starting on the inside with the encounter of the word of God, amen, I am going to uh, get in the covenant of God's word, amen. Now, remember this, my spirit is eternal, amen. Everybody's on who's, who's, who's alive, everybody's on who's on the earth, everybody who's ever lived is going to live forever. It just depends on where you go, amen. Either your spirit leaves your body and you go to be with your maker, or your spirit leaves your body and you are eternally tormented. There's only two ways you can go. You can only go uh, in, the, in, in, the, in the life of the uh, kingdom of God or the kingdom of darkness. And so once I get born again, uh, we begin to side with the word of God because the word of God makes our natural life better. Amen. And the more you get the word of God on the inside of you, Amen. The word of God will cause your natural life uh, to go better because you will be uh, anointed by God to go forth and to show forth. Amen. And God will begin to show up in your situations and in your circumstances and he will promote you. Remember it said over there in, in Psalms chapter 75, it says that promotion uh, promotion doesn't come uh, by man. It says, for promotion comes neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. It says, but God is the judge, and he puts one down, and he sets up another. Amen? So when you come into the kingdom of God, now you have divine help by God himself. Amen? Amen? And it's everything is not left up to your, your education or your, uh, your, your talents and your gifts, you know, or your, your, your pedigree, you know, your family. Amen. You have a new father. Amen. Almighty God. And his spirit, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead has come on the inside of you. Amen. And then we begin to work and move in the covenant of God, which is the word of God. And the Bible is very clear. It says it's life to them that find it. Amen. You got to understand that the word of God is the key. Amen. And if you keep putting it in you and putting it in you and putting it in you and putting it in you, you will get stronger and stronger. And then the Bible says that the sons of God, amen, they'll be led by God. And the spirit of God will just lead you. Amen. He'll just move you in the places, amen, that you will uh, prosper and increase uh, the most. And so we said that because I am a spirit being, prosperity starts from the inside out. It starts from the inside out. And we said that according to Genesis 39, it says Joseph was a prosperous man. Says the Lord was with Joseph, he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And then it says in verse 4, he found grace in the sight, he found grace in his sight, and he served him. And uh, uh, Potiphar made him overseer over his house, and all that he had, he put into Joseph's hand. And then verse 6. I love this verse. It says, and he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not all he had, 
save the bread which he did eat. Potiphar trusted Joseph because it says Joseph was such a, he was such a prosperous man. Potiphar uh, didn't even know what he had in his bank account. He gave Joseph uh, legal right. He was the executor of his estate. And everything he had, he put in Joseph's hand. And he was such a trustworthy man. Potiphar didn't even know what he had. He said, uh, everything uh, comes into Joseph's hand because Joseph knows what to do about it. He's been engineered to increase. There's something about him. He's been engineered to increase. Amen? And this, 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 this young man, he was a slave. His brother sold him to the Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites sold him to the, 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 the Egyptians. And, and, and even though he has nothing visible, amen, on the inside, he is a prosperous man. And ultimately, it shows on the outside because he goes from the prison to the palace. Amen. So if you're in the prison today, if you're experiencing lack, bar barrenness, scarceness, not enough, amen, if you're experience this, experiencing this syndrome of you know, you take two steps forward and, and three steps backwards, and you just feel like, you know, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I just can't get myself together as far as increasing. I can't get my vocation together. I, I, you know, I have a degree, and, and I can't seem to find a job. Or, you know, I don't have a degree, but I am born again, and I, I can't seem to find a job. You just keep on, number one, understanding that your spirit, amen, feeds on the word of God. And just like, you know, if you eat right, and your diet is right, amen, and you're exercising right, it's going to profit your body, and your body's going to get stronger and stronger by way of your diet, amen. So it is in the spirit realm. If you continue to put the word of God in you, and put it in you, and put it in you on purpose, amen? Regardless of your IQ, regardless of your academic achievements, amen? Regardless of your skill set, amen? God still has a place for you where you can prosper and be in health. He still has a place for you where you will increase in this life. And then now we said that, uh, uh, that we are Abraham's seed. We are Abraham's seed. According to the flesh, we are Abraham's seed. And Galatians chapter 3, Galatians chapter 3 is very clear. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. That's us through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Amen. So that means that all the promises of God, all the promises in the Word of God are received by faith. But because you are Abraham's seed, amen, we have a, a, a right, we are heirs, amen, of these exceeding great and precious promises. And then it says in, in Galatians 3.29, if you're Christ, then you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to these promises. Amen? If you're Christ, you're Abraham's seed. We, you and I are Abraham's seed. Now, uh, let's go to Genesis 14. Genesis 14. Harry, 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 Harry. Genesis 14. And we, 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 we find out that God Preach the gospel to Abraham. Amen. Now, Abraham is before the law. Abraham is before Moses. He lived in this great uh, uh, season of grace. He lived in the, uh, the grace of God. He wasn't under the law. Do good, get good. Do bad, get beat. 
He, he, he lived in the dispensation of uh, Abraham's time was a time of grace. Amen. And by grace are we saved through faith, not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. You're going to increase through the gift of God. It is a relative term. What I might uh, consider my wealthy place, you wouldn't consider to be your wealthy place. It is a relative term. But it is a place of all sufficiency in all things. Bread to eat, seed to sow, multiplied seed sown, and an increase in all the fruits of righteousness. It is an understanding, according to um, 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 9, that Jesus became poor. He humbled himself even to the place of death, even to the place of the cross. He became poor that we through his poverty might increase. That through the cross, through his death and burial and resurrection, we receive the great exchange. He took my sin. And gave me his righteousness. He took my darkness. He gave me his light. He took my poverty. And he gave me divine increase. He gave me his divine ability to prosper and be in hell. Amen. The great exchange is made at the cross. Jesus became poor that I through his poverty might have a way out. Amen. Might have a way of increase. And it's through his word. Now don't, any, don't let anyone talk you out of your prosperity. We are in a pandemic now. And you need to be built up. Amen. Concerning your healing. You need to be built up. Concerning your prosperity. You know. We don't know when these days are going to take us. But we do know. Isaiah 60. Arise and shine. People of God. Arise and shine, believer. Your night has already come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And even though darkness would be in the earth and gross darkness would be on the people, the Lord promises that he would be on you and his glory would be seen on you. But you got to start somewhere. You got to believe it. You got to know it's God's will. Amen. And we're going we're gonna to stay here for a little bit, amen, and show you the, 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 uh, the steps that we need to take, for lack of a better uh, term, for lack of a better word, steps you need to take right now to move into your increase, amen. But we know for sure, amen, the Word of God is our schoolmaster. The Word of God is is, the, is the, 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 the agent of increase. The word of God is the agent of healing. And God ordained it to be so by grace through faith. You and I are Abraham's seed. Amen. And heirs according to this great promise. Amen. And what's the promise? I'm going to bless you. Amen. And I'm going to bless them that bless you. Amen. And in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. Uh, Genesis 14, just in a nutshell, uh, Abraham, or Abram, uh, he, uh, he, he rescues his nephew who's been kidnapped. Um, and uh, in actuality, uh, it's the, it's the, the Bible calls it a slaughter. Battle of the Kings. Abraham uh, goes up against five nations with only 318 men. And the Bible says that uh, this war was, was uh, in the slime pits. You know, it was a, a very muddy place. But with 318 men, Abraham uh, slaughters these five nations. And uh, on his way back, uh, he meets up with Melchizedek, and uh, who's the type of Jesus. But you know, here if you see the law of double reference. There's a, a real king called Melchizedek, who is uh, the king of Salem. Uh, but in, in this uh, particular uh, scripture, we see the law of double reference. 
we see that there's a real individual, amen, uh, but Jesus uh, is, uh, according to the book of Hebrews, he comes after the order of Melchizedek. So we understand that in actuality, Abraham, he's meeting up with Jesus. And it says they take communion. Melchizedek gives him the bread, gives him the, the, the wine. They take communion. And according to Galatians uh, 3, and I believe it is verse 8, uh, uh, the gospel is preached to Abraham. And I believe it's right here. Right here. The gospel is preached to Abraham. And uh, then it says, he tithes. This is before the law. He gives the tithe to Melchizedek. He gives the tithe to Jesus. And then the king of Sodom tells him, all the spoils of war you can have. Now watch this. And this is your covenant of increase. Abraham says, uh, he says, and I'm going to read it to you. So it says, Abraham says to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latch, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abraham rich. Did you? Did you? You hear that? That's like you ring, you win in the lottery, or somebody put your name in the lottery, you win in a hundred million dollars, and they come to you, and you say, no, nah, I'm not going to take it, because I don't want anyone to say it. They made me rich. I, I said that to say, that's how deep this covenant is. And whenever you have a lot of controversy, a lot of hating on a particular uh, uh, subject matter, especially in the scriptures, uh, many times there is a, a wealth of insight that is trying to be covered up by the enemy. God wants you to increase. And you need to increase. We need to increase in these last and evil days. Amen. Prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. This is Pastor Ken saying, we love you so very much. We have a drive-in church coming up uh, this Sunday at 10 a.m. The weather's breaking, so come on out. Amen. It's from 10 to 11, and I'm sure... Your presence will, will help us and uh, we will establish, amen, a great presence of God, amen, and we'll be able to feast on the word of God together. Remember, 10 a.m. Sunday morning, be blessed and prosper and be in health, amen, it is your covenant right.